This yeah, conference yeah, sorry, will sorry. now be recorded. Just, just I remember. Thank you. Yeah. Thank sorry, you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So uh, transparent table, this jet demo test, and uh, here you can see that the jet demo test it is at the application server layer. Okay. The table which we have created, the same table gets created at the database layer with the same name with the same field okay so same name with the same field very very important just same name and with the same number of fields and name of the field will be also will be there same fields and same number of fields same number of fields it will be there okay so maybe i can decrease its size a little bit so it will get accommodated fine so this is the important so exactly the same when you come to the pool table what happens that at application server layer i'm just going to draw an application server over here so at application server layer you are having the many pool table okay pool table uh you, you can have you know you can have many pool table like uh, uh, let me do one thing uh, just a second i'm trying to not fill it and i will take it some pool table from here so you have the pool table maybe i can decrease its size a little bit so okay so i have the pool table one over here right pool table one and we can have the pool table two so at application server layer you can have many pool table pool table one pool table two similarly you can have the pool table three pool table four so you have many such kind of table over here and all the table these all are clubbed together in a single table okay here you will be able to see the different table at the application server layer okay but but at the database layer you will be having a single table that table name is called you know the table pool that table is called the table pool okay all this table together gets stored in this table pool okay in this table pool all these pool table one pool table two pool table three all this table is going to get stored inside this table pool so this is actually what happens when it comes for the uh, you know when it comes for the pool table and similarly when you talk about the cluster table the pool table and cluster table architecture is same okay it's going to be same the pool table and cluster table architecture is going to be same so what happens at the cluster table layer also you are having the same so just i'm going to copy these particular things and i will paste it over here maybe and i will write it over so wherever we are having the pool i'm just going to replace with the cluster so at the here in the cluster table also at application server layer we are having the different cluster table cluster table one cluster table two cluster table three like that it can many cluster table okay and corresponding to this corresponding to this we are having table cluster over here table cluster over here so just let me table cluster okay so hope it's clear for all of you so we understood like table is of three types transparent table so transparent table is having here exactly the one table you know at the database layer so this is actually also known as the one to one relationship so maybe i can write it over here somewhere it's a one to one relationship okay so this is one to one relationship okay so from the database table to application uh, from from application server to database server there is 
one to one relationship in case of pool table and cluster table you can see over here it's a many to one relationship that means at application server layer you are having many table at the database layer you are having you no know, you are having exactly one table okay cluster table here also you are having the many to one relationship here also you are having the many to one relationship so this is one important difference between all these okay we will also understand why the concept come this pool table cluster table you know uh, why not all the table is transparent table this also we'll see but before that you know let's understand that uh, uh, like the transparent table when we talk about the transparent table you know what exactly it means okay so if you see the terms here the transparent transparent itself tells you know the perfect image like whatever it is looking over here the same is going to be looked over here it's a transparent as the name suggests pool if you see it's a pool pool means gucha in hindi we tells and the pool that means the group of something similarly the cluster means the group of something but here we are having some differences that we are going to see now okay so fine let's go and create one more slides and we will discuss the differences over there so maybe i can give the pool table over here let's give the transparent first then i will give the pool table and then we will be having the cluster table then we are having the cluster table fine so we are having the three section and we are just going to compare all is this like uh, between the difference between all these pool, uh, transparent table pool table and cluster table okay i will also emphasize a little bit like why this you know this pool table and cluster table came into the picture w what actually happens you know when we are going to use a transparent table so transparent table is having you know like uh, it's a uh, 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 as we discussed like it is having one to one relationship right so the records in the table are you know not complicated they are uh, not logically uh, dependent on each other you know but here in pool table if you see here all the pool table records it uh, uh, it can be a small a small table this pool table can be of a small table and by the application server layer it requires to have all pool table together faced at the same time when they are going to do when they are going to write some logic at the application server layer they may require to get all the data from the pool table whatever the data it's there so these are the many small small tables it can be you know 10 to uh, 10 tables 20 tables all the 10 tables and 20 tables is going to be stored at the in the table pool okay so like when you are having the many such a small tables which are which are uh which are sh should be put together and which are supposed to be fetched together at application server layer at that point of time we are going to use the pool table when we come to the cluster table in cluster table these are very big table actually these cluster tables are very big table these cluster tables are very big table these are logically related tables that means their records are logically related so what is the meaning of logically related that means if there is some record in the cluster table one is there there is having some relationship between this cluster table two some relationship between cluster table three some relationship between cluster table four so they all all the records are logically related and these are the big table for for example if we're going to store some document okay so generally it is used to store the continuous you know document record 
for example if you have the word document if you want to store such kind of uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, microsoft word document uh, at your application server you know or some data in the word document if you want to store in the application server cluster table is recommended if you are having lot of documents uh, there to store okay if they are logically related so oh, many documents together if they are logically related then we are supposed to use the cluster table so that the benefit of this in cluster table you can compress you can you know archive the things you can compress the things not archive actually you can compress the things and you can get suppose here you are going to you know 10 gb of data you are going to use uh, if we're going to store separately if we're going to make this cluster table separately like you know uh, a transparent table if you are going to make all the cluster table in form of transparent table suppose it's going to take 10 gb of data but if we're going to make this cluster table in form of uh sorry but if we're going to make this uh this uh, uh transparent table the 10 difference transparent table if, if they are logically related you know uh, if you're going to make uh, uh into form of cluster table that uh, particular uh, that particular record which is earlier taking 10 gb of data now it's going to take 1 gb of data so actually there is a, a very good compression technique used at the cluster table layer which is going to compress the data and in turn it gives you the uh, it, it it uses the less memory that's the benefit of the cluster table so if you have to compress the data you can use it over here now you can see one more things i would like to tell over here just as of now you understand that here in this transparent table you can use the open sql as well as the native sql both because the name over here at the application layer whatever the name here the jet demo test the table name the same table name gets created over here so if we're going to put the select query on this jet demo test and if we're going to put the select query with the help of native sql over here both is same it's going to give you the same result but here because the pool table one pool table two it is only exist at the application server layer it does not exist at the database layer so if we're going to put the select query you know on the native uh, in form of native sql directly on your database layer it will not work because this pool table one pool table two it is not there here all the table are together in the table pool so native sql does not work over here native sql also does not work over here in cluster table and pool table so some differences i have tried to make you understand some differences we will understand let's first show you what is the index indexing okay what is the use of indexing okay but before that i would like to maybe uh, i would like to teach you about the check table and foreign key relationship then we will come again and we will see like uh, you know once you understand all those concepts then it will be better for you to differentiate this uh, transparent table pool table and cluster table in terms of indexing as well okay so first we will see uh, the check table though there is no relationship between this check table and indexing but still let us first see about this check table then we will go and see about the indexing and then again we will come over there in the different types of table and we will see the differences and we will note down the differences okay fine so hope it's clear till now if you have any question please feel free to ask or you can drop a message over here on the chat box okay fine so now you can see that i have already created some record over here right in jmb28 student this is my the student table over here this is the main table right now i want to create a check table so what is the check table so check table is nothing but you might have heard about the term referential integrity right or foreign key relationships so let's understand first about a uh, little bit the theoretical concept about the check table and then we will go and create one check table over here okay so i will create one table over here maybe some three or four records or three records suppose okay and here I will insert one more table.
okay so i have two table over here maybe i can use this table like this and little bit i will shift it over here fine so suppose i'm going to use this student table only so a student id and we are having some uh you know maybe <clears throat> uh here let me make this one as the main table this i'm going to create as a main table maybe i can create as a student id something like that a student name a student name and so this is the student first name i can write it and a student last name last name so here suppose you are having two students only in your system you are having in your system you are having only two students uh, now what you want to do you want to keep the student mobile number over here for example just i'm taking this as an example you know this is one is your main student table okay this is your main student table and in this uh, main student table you have just put the student id a student first name and a student last name right now you know that uh, whatever a student you are having you know they are having more than one mobile number let's say this is your mobile number table okay maybe i can write it over here it's a z a student mobile I'm just taking this as a dummy table just to make you understand and here this is your z student main table okay so z student main table we are having and z student mobile table i'm having over here a student id one can have here i'm just going to give one counter right and then i'm just going to give you here the mobile number so the student one is having the two mobile number let us suppose okay so nine double zero something something it's a having the a number so i'm just going to keep the counter one and here again the student one is having the second mobile number maybe some another number it is having or some another telephone number something like that okay so the student number one is having two mobile number again the student number two suppose it is having only one mobile number so just i'm going to give so i have created one main table that is that main table is this one j the student main where the student first came and they they just came over here and they just registered with their name so what i noted down the student id a student first name and its student last name i have noted down because i were going to do the normalization you know why we use the normalization right just to improve the uh, memory wastage you know just improve like uh, to not not use the uh, memory repeatedly you know so in in order to avoid the record duplicacy we use the normalization generally and to improve the system performance so if you would have put over here here itself you know so what would happen that a student first name a student uh, a student first name a student last name it would have come two times right unnecessarily it would have come two times and it would have taken the extra memory that's why the normalization comes into the picture and instead of putting the mobile number here in itself what we have done we have normalized the table and we have put into the different you know we have created one more table and uh, what we have done we have created one student id over here and here because one student id is having two different mobile numbers just i am putting it over here by this way we are able to save some memory right and from performance wise also suppose if you have to fetch only the mobile number for the student it's going to give you the better performance okay but the thing is there is some relationship between this suppose if you want to get the student mobile number with the student first name and last name there must be some relationship right so how you are going to do the how you are going to define the relationship other important thing is like you know if we are going to give the here this is the second table suppose by mistake if we are going to give three over here 
the three the student ID does not present over here. The student number three, student ID number three is not over here. So the system will not allow you to enter, you know, system will not allow you to enter the student ID three over here because in your main table, a student ID three is not there, you know. So that's where the referential integrity comes into the picture, okay? So when you are going to create this Z student, you know, when you are going to create this Z student mobile number table, if you want to put this restriction, you know, you must have to give, uh, you must have to, uh, you must have to define the referential integrity. You must have to define the foreign key relationship between this Z student mobile number, uh, the student ID of Z student mobile number table and the J student ID of this main table, you have to define the relationship so that your record will be consistent, right? If three were going to put it over here and a student ID three is not here, then your record will be inconsistent, right? So for that purpose, we are going to define the referential integrity. So now we are going to define the referential integrity between the student ID of the second table and the student ID of the first table so that when you are going to put this three, it will give you the error. Okay, so that that how to define that in SC 11. That means in our data dictionary that I will show you, but the term what we use that I will just let you know over here. So this table is actually known as the check table. Okay, this table, the main table with whom we are going to perform the check. This is known as the check table and this table right for which we are going to put the check this is known as the foreign table okay this is known as the foreign table let me so this is known as the foreign table now let's see about the key what this key is called so this key is called you know foreign key this key here you are having this key this student id key in foreign table is known as foreign key so maybe i can note it down this also this is known as the foreign key okay and this this key over here right with whom i'm going to uh, up, uh with with whom i'm going to you know maintain the relationship this this key must be the primary key right so a student id here just i'm going to put this student id with this student id the relationship this student id must be a primary key okay must be the primary key so this is actually the, this in the main table this must be the primary key. So just I'm going to write it as a primary key. Okay. Now, so these are some important term which it is there. Just I have noted it down. This this relationship is also known as you know the foreign key relationship. Okay. This relationship is known as the foreign key relationship. Okay. This relationship is known as the foreign key relationship. This is also known as to maintain the referential integrity this also this activity is also known as to maintain the referential integrity so let us see how to do this one so when you are going to put the record number three if this record number one two is not there it will give you the error okay so i'm just going to put over here two because it will only allow you to put two over here not three so let's go here and we will see here i have defined one table okay so this table if you see over here that it is having the first name last name age date of birth and mobile number maybe i'm just going to you know uh, tell that because we are having the different mobile number for one student so what i will do i will remove this mobile number from this table and i will create one another z student mobile number table and there i will put the you know uh table and i will also establish the uh a referential integrity with this main table. So this is our main table. Maybe I can write it over here. 
that main student table main student table just save it okay <clears throat> okay so here you know here you can see that i have not given any client over here right mndt field i have not given okay that concept also we will understand what why i am talking about the client what is the meaning of client dependent and what is the meaning of client independent okay what is the meaning of client dependent and what is the meaning of client dependent let's first create the but i think it will it's a uh, it's a right time to discuss about the you know uh, client dependent and client independent once we will understand this we will go ahead and we will see what is you know the differential integrity in terms of practical knowledge okay so i will show you over here what is the client independent and client dependent so let me go to the ppt once again and i will try to explain it theoretically first over here and then we will go there and we will see the client dependent versus client independent okay so what happens that if you are having one single sap right if you have suppose you have a big sap system installed in your organization okay this is your sap system so in this sap system because it's a big system it can be divided into multiple parts okay it can be divided into multiple clients that means it can be divided into multiple parts so i'm just going to divide into multiple parts maybe so i'm going to divide into four parts okay so system is one your sap system the main system is only one but just you are going to divide into different parts for example like if you go and check i'm um, having my hard disk has been divided into three different you know uh here you can see that my hard disk this pc is having different different like lo local local disk and new volume in two different my hard disk has been divided into two uh, different partition so similarly to store the data suppose if you are having only one system and your system name is for example i'm just giving the system name is something like a sap uh, system any system for example you can see here this is the ept system the name of the system is ept and client is 800 right so the in the same system we can have multiple client so maybe i can take the same system the name of the system is ept and here we can have the ept here we can have the ept 800 client here i can have the ept 810 client the system is same only the client is going to be different and why this client is different because i want to differentiate the data you know i want to put uh, i want to use the same system for the different purpose i want to use my same system for the different purpose that's why the client i have i have uh, i have partitioned my i have partitioned the same system into the different client so that i can use the same system for the different purpose okay so whatever the data you are going to create in this client in 800 client that you will not be able to see into a ept 810 client though the system is same though the system is same but the login credential for all these client will be different system is same but the login credential will be the different so this is the client concept actually i will just show you once again over here and maybe i can show you here you can see this is the client once you start logging into the system at that time also you can see it will give you the option to choose the client you can see that this is the client it will give you the option to choose the client the system is same in the same system different client can be possible okay <clears throat> come over here and this time we will create uh, we will give the client over here so that my data will be client dependent means i want to see my data i want to put my data only in 800 client i don't want to show means i don't want to get visible my data in 810 client 
okay so if someone is having the access of 810 client they will not be able to see the uh, if they are not having the access of 800 client and if they are having only the access of 810 client they will not be able to see my data right i want to restrict my data to be visible for the person who is not having the access okay so i'm just going to enter one <clears throat> you know field over here and that field name i'm going to put it over here mandt and key initial and the data element also i'm just going to use the mandt over here okay and just save it and check it and you can see the structure change at field level convertible jdmbt all these things it is telling why because i have put i have changed at the key level i have changed at the key level so let us see uh there is a transaction called over here uh ac14 you can go to ac14 or directly you can come over here you can go to database object come over here and you can go to the database utility once you click on this database utility it will come this screen and you can see that activate and adjust database in order to remove that error we can try with this and let us see if it's going to help us or not okay so this is the approach we generally follow okay and you can see now it got successfully activated that means it has adopted this field mndt field has been adopted so if you're also going to get such kind of error you can go uh, to sc14 you can directly go to sc14 okay and you can go into edit mode and you can click over here or else you can directly go to utility you can go to database object and you can click on this database utility you will be able to do so now check there is fine there is no problem not just warning and it can be activated also there is no issue let's go and see how our data is looking over here and you can see all the data has now the client 800 right and it's a key field that means you will not be able to see in another client right earlier when i have not given this mandt it would have been visible in all the client okay 800 810 820 because it was not the client dependent now it became the client dependent okay earlier it was client independent now we are going to create one more table over here that's a mobile number table okay so just go over here go back and i will give the prefix will be jdmb28 only and i'm going to give a student a mob click on this create button and here i will write the student mobile give the delivery class i told you what is the purpose of this delivery class this is mainly used for you know transport purpose it this it uh, uh it defines the behavior of the transport now here mndt now onwards all the table i'm going to define with the mndt field it's a best practice to use the mndt make the table field as a client dependent okay so i'm just going to use the client dependent and the data element will be mandt and here i'm just going to use the student id right the student id field and here the data element what so the main table in the main table whatever the data element i have used the same data element i'm going to use it over here so come over here uh, into the main table maybe go back remove this it's not required we'll go to the main table remove this one also it is not required okay fine come over here sc11 we'll go to our main table this is the second table which i have i'm trying to create this is the first table now i want to see what i have given the student id over here here you can see the student id i have given the data element int1 so this is the existing data element i have used over here you can see it is the existing data element suppose if you want to create your own data element over here if you want to give your own data type right if you want to use your own data element and if you want to give 
as per your requirement the data type how you can do that so what you can do you can remove this one and you can create your own data element so whatever you are going to create data element domain or table anything it must be starting with either z or y so z a student underscore id i'm just going to create this data element instead of int one i have used earlier okay i want to create my own data elements so i have given this name and if i press enter it will tell you know it will tell okay already someone has created this j student id that's why automatically you can see it has taken it is not giving any error but maybe i'm just going to create my own data element so jmb28 i'm giving it's my prefix which i'm using over here all right fine and this data element i'm going to create now if you see if you press enter you can see that here there is nothing right and once again if you press enter you know nothing is coming no data type nothing is coming that means this data data element does not exist okay this means this data element does not exist first time if you have jobbed over here it has written over there that this data element is not active that means it is not uh, uh, that that means it is not there so double click over here and click on this yes button click on this yes button and we are going to create this data element so once i have double clicked over here it has asked me do you want to create this data element i have clicked on yes button and now i have come over here okay so data element for a student id i'm just going to give the student id and i'm creating my own data element okay here you can see that one more option is coming for the domain inside the data element it is asking me to create a domain right so maybe we can create one domain as well so just give one domain i will let you know the difference between you know data element and domain here also you can observe the difference you can see inside the data element i'm it is asking to create a domain so z mb 28 underscore just i'm going to give the same name you know whatever the name of the data element is there the same name you can use or the different name also you can use i'm just going to use the same name okay for the domain also and i will press enter it will tell that this domain does not there because this domain is not there with the same name data element i'm creating but this domain is not there so domain also i'll have to create so double click on this domain and click on this yes button and it will ask me to create the domain it is asking me to package i'm just going to give non-productive package that means in a local object i don't have to transport this into another environment just i it i will put it into this environment only right in this local system only so local object i am putting it over here click on this yes button and in the short description what you can give that uh domain for a student id something like that you can give domain for a student id domain you can give and the data type what you can give here it now as per your requirement you can choose so suppose for this student id you want to put some numeric data type okay if you want to put some numeric data type or some integer data type or some character data type right any kind of data type if you want to choose based upon your requirement you can choose over here so numc just i'm going to choose numc okay and the number of characters i want to keep it the maximum in my uh in my institute can be 999 student if i know i can put this three or four or whatever based upon your requirement press enter then come to this value range okay you can see the fixed value and all is coming over here we will see what is the meaning of this fixed value okay just save it as of now there is no problem local object go over here just go back okay just save it but one thing what i did i forgot to activate this one this domain so i have again come to this domain by double clicking over here and now i will activate this domain first i have activated just go back to the data element over here you can see its status is new i will have to activate it okay i will have to activate it so before activation what we can do one more field level one one a tab is there here you can give some you know description a student id so 
it will be useful when you are going to create the table maintenance generator okay so i will show you how it's going to be useful over there just save it and check the syntax there is no inconsistency click on this activate button just click on this activate button go back now your this data element got activated and you can see the numc3 is now coming over here right similarly for the first name if you want to create the data element what you can do zmb you know 28 f name first name this is the data element i'm going to create okay similarly for the last name i want to create the data element i don't want to use the existing one i want to create my own data element suppose so if you click enter over here you can see jmb last name is not active about this one it is chilling even the first one is also not there okay just double click on the first one first we will create the first one okay you can see the data element does not exist create the data element question mark yes i want to create so here data element for the first name just i'm going to give the first name and here i will write the data element for first name and here the domain i'm also again going to create the domain over here right so double click uh, go here click on this yes button click on this local object click on this yes and here i will give the domain for first name domain for first name so if actually this domain can be used in multiple data element i will i will show you okay first name or what you can do maybe this is a better place where i can show you the multi uh, the domain you can use for the uh, multiple purpose okay just i'm trying to go back it's not allowing me now it has come okay so here you can see i have come to the data element and here instead of using this data element name like this i'm just going to use some generic name okay so z name i'm just going to use z mb28 underscore name so that i can use for any kind of name for example the second name or last name i'm going to uh, when i'm going to create the last name data element at that point of time also i can use this domain so the single domain i can use at two places okay why to create multiple domain right so the domain i'm going to create and the here the short description i'm just going to give the domain for name something like that domain for name and the data type here certainly it will be the character data type right and the uh, length i'm just going to give something like 20 characters okay press enter just save it and activate this one save it and activate this one okay just go back and here also what you can do you can save it you can check the syntax and you can activate this one so it data element also got activated just go back and here you can see the car 20 is coming right now this data element okay l name data element now i want to create right but one thing for the first name i forgot to give this field label let me give this field label though it's not mandatory at this point of time okay in this particular scenario but oh, in table maintenance generator it will give you you know it will not give you the level over there that's why i'm just putting at this point of time itself and there i will show you activate once again because i have changed over here just go back and for the last name i'm going to create this you know so here the data element data element for last name i'm just going to create okay so and here you can see last name i can maintain okay so you can see here it is something intending towards the semantical meaning you can see the data element here i'm just giving the last name right so it's more or less like you know semantic it's a semantic so here the existing one itself the existing jdmb28 underscore name the domain i have created the same domain i can use right the car 20 it was there the same you can use there is no issue okay just save it and activate it 
and it got activated just go back and you can see I've created my own three data element over here the age also I want to create my own age jade age right jade age and uh, uh, maybe you can put it some gender over here also okay date of birth I'm just going to remove I don't want age of now uh, I want to put this gender only just I'm going to remove this date of birth I'm going to put age and gender over here okay jade age if you want to create you can give the jade age over here and press enter let me see if some data element is already there no data element for jade age double click over here yes um click on this age and for I'm just going to give the age data element data element for age and the domain you can use a predefined domain also it is not necessary to create every time domain if you don't feel like creating if you don't uh, uh, feel that you don't have requirement then no is not required to create so the existing also you can use like you know car 20 something like that you know so press enter so give only car over here the age for age maybe you can use the numeric data type or character also character is the generic data type you can use for any purpose you can use for any purpose even for mathematical operation also it can be used okay so that's why this character data type is the most most wide used data type most wide used data type this character you know so car 20 may be the age 20 characters is not uh, good three characters is fine for age okay there will be no any person who will be greater than 999 years something like that you know just save it and local object maintain the fill level it is asking us to maintain a fill level here you can see right so i'm just going to give the age paste it paste it paste it press enter just save it activate this one activate this one just go back okay and age i have given over here the gender z gender i'm just going to create press enter and you can see someone has created this z gender so maybe i can create z mb28 underscore gender okay actually here also we are supposed to create z mb28 underscore age that would have been better we should have the consistent naming convention okay consistent naming convention so gender data element just i'm going to give it okay so here for the gender i'm going to create you know one data uh, domain with the same data element name or you can keep the different also there is no issue or you can use the existing one but here actually i want to show you some important things over here local object click on this yes button and here gender domain for gender maybe i can write domain for gender and the data element here what you can give that care one I, i'm just willing to fill up either it will be you know uh, male or female right just two possible i'm just going to give so care and one m for male and another for female and here you can give the restriction okay so i want to give the restriction for male i want to use m and for female i want to use female so here also a kind of check i'm performing it's not a check table but kind of check i'm performing okay so here uh, male just i'm going to write and here i'm just going to write the female okay just save it local object and activate this one just go back activate this one also just go back so now everything got activated and now we are going uh, good to insert the data so let's go into this and we'll create the data into this so how to create the data utility uh, table contents and create entries this is one way how you can do i'm just going to give some entry over here maybe four and the student id uh, first name maybe i'm going to write uh, some rahul sen age something like 30 i want to give okay 
and date of birth but why that is not coming that gender is not coming over here right that gender you can see it's not coming let me see if it got properly activated or not you can see that it's in inactive state right that's why the gender is not coming first you activate check the syntax and you can see a structure change at field level again the same error is coming earlier it was coming so what we can do we can go to utilities you can go to data uh, database object database utility and first we'll activate this one i'm just going to activate this one and it is get activated now it got activated just go back now it's fine now go to utilities table contents create entries okay and here you can see the gender is now coming all right so here you can give the four rahul sane and the age may be 30 i can give over here the gender you can see uh, here nothing is coming right no f4 help is coming no search help is coming but here you can see the search help is coming over here this search help if you press over here you can see male and female it is coming so from where it is coming it is coming from the domain right just i have shown you just have shown you so it's coming from domain this is the restriction if you would like to give other than this you know uh, male or female it will not take if you are going to give this j or y anything by mistake it will not take that's why you do the data validation so this is also one technique this is not the checkable technique you know this is another uh, this is the fixed value technique at the domain level right domain level i am restricting the data so i'm just going to aim over here give you aim over here click on this save button and this record got saved over here now i want to create one uh, another table with the mobile number so i'm just going to create the mobile number slash so you know okay uh, okay one more thing for this student id I'm just going to copy this transparent table over here and for this student ID you know for this data element for this domain if you come over here at this value range I'm going to mention this value table okay in which uh, I'm going to mention this table name actually ZMB28 underscore student this is my table name this table name I'm going to maintain at the value table level okay why we maintain the value table when you are going to create any check table difference that will this value table will be proposed as the check table i will show you how it will give okay so you can see at value table level i have maintained over here just you observe over here okay activate because i have changed over here just go back just go back and create that table I'm just going to note it down this table because I will be required later. And here, JMB student ID, something like that. This table, student mobile. Click on this create table. It's already, it's telling that I'm editing somewhere. Maybe I have, yeah, here already we have, uh, you know already we have started creating but in between we have just stopped so fine no worries we'll go once again into the existing table and we will copy the data element from here and the same data element i will use for the student id for this particular table control v press enter okay if you get any doubt please stop me and ask me okay i'm understanding that you are able to understand everything you know fine so here a student underscore id is the key field and the counter because one student id can have the multiple you know mobile number so combination of a student id and counter is going to create a unique key so i'm giving one counter also okay and maybe for this counter what i will do you can create one you know uh, for this z counter you can create already this data element is there so no not required to create you can see it is there now the mobile number okay so for this mobile number i'm going to create one uh for z mobile maybe and there is no so z mb28 um, because i um, have to create new one so let's have z mb28 underscore this one okay double click over here click on this yes button 
local object yes and for the mobile number i'm just going to give the mobile number and here i will just copy this fill label i will paste it the mobile number mobile number mobile number mobile number now come to this uh, data type and here predefined i will just use the predefined one car maybe 12 okay just save it just save it local object check it activate this one activate this one okay now we can activate this table also okay so it is asking for data class let's give a double pl0 the data class and size category is zero that's fine just go back and we'll click on the save button click on this activate button and it got activated now okay you can see it's in active status now i want to you know i i uh if, if i go over here you know i want to put the checkable relationship on this student id so whatever the student id here in this table only that student id i should be able to maintain over here one two three four so only i should be able to maintain the one two three four okay if you now now if you will try to maintain you know the fifth number a student id it will not give you any error or something like that because i have not maintained any che check table relationship you know if you click on this save button it will get you know database record successfully created though the five number record is not here you can see only one two three four is there in the main table right but in mobile number table the uh, student number id 5 the mobile number value got created it is not supposed to be right it is not supposed to be because the student id 4 does not exist so how to restrict this one so to restrict this one what you can do you can put the cursor over here and click on this foreign key relationship okay click on this yes button and you can see the automatically the check table value it is coming over here so this check table is this check table value is automatically coming from the what we have mentioned at the value level this particular table we have mentioned for this particular you know for this particular data element domain level if you see the domain of this data element i have mentioned this value table over there so when i am creating the check table over here by default it is proposing that particular value table as a check table over here right so it is not necessary to maintain the value table over there you can directly also put over here the check table okay but uh, that's the benefit if you are going to put the value table over here it will propose you to create the check table so check table for a student id i'm just going to create and just click on this create button that's it okay it got created just save it check the syntax uh, this is fine it's a warning we can ignore the warning even we can remove this warning also i will let you know how we can ignore this one okay now if you come over here table content and create entries and now if you'll try to give the student number maybe six you know new student number okay and the counter maybe two you know it will it will not allow you to enter because the six number student is not there in the main table you can see here the entry six does not exist in the main table check entry okay so only the student id one two three four whatever it is there that only you can and you can see that f4 help is also coming right one two three four so you can select only one out of these not other than this okay so one and the counter may be one and the mobile number one you can insert this one and for the same you can see it got successfully created and now if you want to create another mobile number you can click on the save button and it got created another mobile number for the same student third mobile number also if you want to create you can create right similarly for the second student also the first mobile number if you want you can create right click on the save button so like that you can create or like that you can maintain the check table right you have seen now that yeah five because already we have created that's why it is there right whichever you have created before the check table it is there it will be there but after or what afterwards you will not be able to create you will be not be able to create which is not over there so this is how you can maintain 
the checkable relationship okay this is how you can maintain the checkable relationship and just two more minutes i will let you know how you can create you know the table maintenance generator it's very easy let me show you okay let me go over here this is our main table i will go back and table maintenance generator is created to maintain the record okay if you have to maintain the record see this is one way like how you can maintain the record this is one way but it's not very convenient way you know and suppose if you want to uh, if you if you want uh, your customer to come and maintain like this he will get irritated and also you cannot give the access of se 11 you know this is very important transaction you can see this is a transaction se 11 where we are doing all these things it's a very very important transaction so the mainly it is supposed to be used by those person because you know this is a ddl data definition language and with this with the help of this you can manipulate any table you can delete any table you can do anything with the table right so if someone is having the access of data dictionary you know it's not good and here this is not the convenient way of entering the data so we create a sm30 with the help of which you can create a table maintenance generator and the access of that table maintenance generator can be given to any customer and that customer can use the table maintenance generator in the sm30 transaction and there he can maintain the entry okay or what you can do you can create a t code for that particular table maintenance generator and you can give your customer to maintain the entry so how to create the t code and all i will show you that but let us see first how to create a table maintenance generator we will go to utility what we'll have to do whatever table you want to create the table maintenance generator you first in go into that table click on this display okay go to this utility and here you can see that one option is there table maintenance generator click on this button here you have to select the authorization group i'm just using the authorization group this one i don't want to give any authorization i don't want to apply any authorization i don't want to put any restriction that's why i'm using this authorization group if you want to put some authorization you can give the authorization group over here with the help of a basis person you can ask a basis to create an authorization object and authorization group he will give you the authorization group and whoever is having the access of that authorization group or what or whoever the user will fall under the, that particular authorization group that only will be able to use to maintain the entry into that particular table okay so i'm here as of now i'm not giving any uh a restriction the function group here you can use the existing function group i will let you know how you can create a new one but here i'm just going to use the existing one so z star i'm searching any existing function group okay so z star just i'm going to give and i will search for any existing i'm just going to use this one maybe someone has created this one i'm just going to use maintenance type going to select one and here you have to click on the find a screen number click on this automatically it will propose the screen number and it will fill up over here so already one two three has been used by someone else so here the four got automatically proposed okay just click on this create button and your table maintenance generator is now get created in just 10 seconds okay and now with the help of this table maintenance generator what you can do you can maintain the entry in the main table similarly for the j student mobile number also you can create the table maintenance generator okay so this is your assignment please create one you know uh secondary table yesterday you have created one main table you know it's taking some time because it has to create uh, in background one function group in that function group it's going to create one program because you know a lot many code it has to write that's why it's taking some time hello no worries uh, sir, yes uh, can can i uh, use the uh, table name as a function group yes you can use there is no worries if you want table name you can you can create you can create with the table name the function group you can create with the table name it 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 all depends on you how you want to use function group should be there now with the same name if you want you can see if the same name but why to create with the same num same name the you know uh, 
if you want you can create there is no issue okay fine any other question no, sir. Yeah. yeah yeah Please what is the use of function group function group is used to bundled the function module together so we are having one chapter called function module there we will learn about the function group so function group is nothing but all the function modules together get stored over there so this when we are going to create this particular you know uh, 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 this uh, maintenance table maintenance generator this particular tmg this is also known as tmg that means table maintenance generator then we this function group if you come double click over here on if you double click it's not taking you over there i will show you just go to slash o s e a t transaction okay and from here you can select the function group come over here and you can select here the function group name okay give the function group name okay so here you can see this is the function group right if you double click over here okay you can see here you are having one option called master program double click over here okay and here you can see that the different function module got created over here this is the name of you know uh, this is name of the uh, include you can see the sub programs all the sub programs is there all the pbo modules pa modules so why this pbo and pa modules this is nothing but this is the code written over here for our table maintenance generator okay so in the function group when we have click on the create button you know then for this table maintenance this table maintenance generator is nothing but the chunk of code you can double click over here and you can see there are a lot of code has been written and this code is actually in background is going to be work when you are going to enter the data into the function group okay so even if you want you can put some breakpoint over here somewhere and you can see how the flow comes okay so maybe that also i can show you okay so but as of now let's leave this part you know just understand this much that in background codes get generated in order to achieve the functionality for the table maintenance generator okay so now if you go back okay our table maintenance generator got created now if you will try to create the entry it will call you the table maintenance generator okay you can see this is the screen for the table maintenance generator right this is the screen for the table here you can see the first name last name is coming from where this first name and last name is coming this first name last name is coming from the label we have maintained at the data element level okay from the label we have maintained at the data element level that means here it's coming from here okay it's coming from here so maybe i can show you one more important stuff over here and then we will wrap up our session okay so here you can see that data dictionary change view and here you can see for the for the you know for the gender nothing is coming it's coming the plus button right it's coming the plus button so why this is coming the plus button because for the gender label has not been maintained whoever has created the jade gender we have not created right we have not created this no we have created in fact but i think we have not put the gender over there you can see it's a blank right that's why the name is not coming over here so just you give the gender over here copy just copy it copy it and put it everywhere the same control v just save it save it just activate this one it got activated now right go back and then here now if you go but the thing is here you know what will be the problem that you will have to again you know you will have to again regenerate this table maintenance generator then only this will come otherwise it will not come you can see go to utilities table contents create entries and you can see it's not coming so what you will have to do you will have to go into change mode first 
go into utilities table maintenance generator or else directly you can go to sm30 if you don't want to go into change mode okay and here you can see that the table maintenance generator is coming like this click on this change button or what you can do you can just delete this one okay and create once again okay if you are not able to because when you are clicking on this change button what happens that you have to be export enough in order to select the option over there okay so you should have the proper understanding otherwise you will get confused over there so what you can do you can delete first the table maintenance generator you have created and again from a scratch you can create okay so when i'm deleting this one it will what it will do it will you know it will delete all this code and all okay it will whatever the code it has been created either it will be marked as a, you know commented or it will be removed or this include will be means because i'm just going to delete it over here right so maybe you can check it over here also go to this master program okay okay fine we will see that part later okay here you see and once again we will create this again and specify the number of single screen that's fine press enter select this one step find a screen number propose and the fourth number screen already created so it's just taking the fifth number but the tmg the existing tmg got uh, you know destroyed and now i'm again creating the tmg it's telling jade mara 10 already i'm processing this one what is this jade mara 10 this is nothing but your your what this is your nothing but your function group so it's asking me to come out okay so i have just come out from here and what i will do press enter once again just go back and let me see utilities table maintenance generator we will go once again one step find a screen number give that function group press enter click on this ok button find a screen number ok fine and click on this create button click on the save button local object and now it's uh, this time it's getting created okay so it will get created in some time if you have any question in between you can ask me any doubt if you have hello okay anyone else no sir okay fine so it got activated you can see request completed without errors right there is no error so now what you can do you can click on this uh, uh, or or i will show you you know with the help of sm30 how you can go just go to sm30 okay sm30 and i will give the table name automatically though it's coming click on this maintain button and it will again open the same screen and this time you can see the gender is coming right because it got regenerated it got regenerated and gender also the only two option is coming male and female because we have restricted at the domain level right we have restricted at the domain level so if you want to create the new entry you can go over here a student id you can give here whatever you want the student id 678 the first name maybe monica and the last name sharma and the age maybe i can give the 35 and gender female we can give and click on this here multiple entry you can give over here you know uh, john i can give maybe john over here and uh, any other name john disuja something like that okay and the age i can give 36 and the male so multiple entry you can create and click on this save button you can see the data got saved so your assignment what you have to do that you know come over here go to the new slides 
and here in the first assignment you were supposed to create this table you will have to create an employee id uh, did employee mobile number okay and you have to create the uh, check table relationship this employee id and you should be able to enter in that table okay so maybe i will copy this one so this is your your first assignment and this after this first assignment now what you will do that you know in the second step in the second step this is your first step under the second step what you will have to do create one more table called z ad underscore employee and then mobile okay with uh, below fields maybe and what we'll do that you know they will put here the employee id and the second you can use a counter because one employee can have multiple mobile number okay or you can take like address number also address also one employee can have the address line different address maybe permanent address local address something different, different address. so whatever you want you can do but do such kind of assignment so that you will be able to understand and now in the second step what you do create a relationship create a relationship between this table and this table okay so create a relationship between this table and this table for which field for a student id uh, for employee id actually employee id so that so that in mobile table that means the this table so that in table no one should be able to put the invalid entry put the invalid student uh, sorry employee id okay so this you will have to do also what you can do you have to maintain here or maybe in this table itself you can create one gender okay uh, but here it's not good idea to create the gender here in the existing table itself what you can do that add the new field over here okay this you can add as a new field and for this new field at the domain level add this new field add this new field and at domain level and at domain level restrict the value as male and female restrict the value for uh, restrict the value as m and f as i have done the same thing you'll have to do over here and also give a value table right for this employee id whatever you will create the you know the data element for this employee id for that employee id at data element level when you go into the domain level at that particular time you give this z ad employee as a value table so that when you will be creating the check table it will give you a proposal though that is not mandatory without that also you can try and you can do but just i wanted to show you like how value table we have so what is the significance of so this is only the significance of value table nothing more than this when you are going to use the value table at the domain level when you are uh, and when you are going to create the check table that value table will be proposed as a check table if it is maintained if it is not maintained then you will have to explicitly define the check table okay so with this uh, from my side it's over please uh, you know ask any question if you have any from the previous assignment or else we can wrap up our today session over here and we will meet again tomorrow okay fine then any question from anyone kalim you were there hello 
Hello, Kalim, are you there? Okay, I think he's not there. Fine, no issue. Let's uh, uh, start tomorrow. Hello. 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 